tonight on Evening. From the takeout place with a five pound pizza to a getaway with all the sandy social distance you need to the people doing their best to shine a light for others. It's Evening's Best of the Best. Welcome to the show, I'm Jim Dever. Tonight we are revealing the best of the best. First up on the menu, Best Takeout. It's a pizzeria in Burien that offers an artistic take on the classic comfort food. Here's Saint. Oh, everybody loves pizza, it's gotta be number one. When Mike Shoemaker opened up a pizzeria in Burien nearly 30 years ago, he came up with an unusual name. So every pizza we made was a masterpiece, so uh, we decided to go with the pizza gallery. Now, the Pizza Gallery really is a gallery, displaying the works of mostly local students painted on pizza boxes Mike donated to schools. We started competitions and became a thing. Some of that art is good, but there's only one masterpiece here. Oh yeah, it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's well known in the area. That's the large five pound masterpiece. Uh, it's pepperoni, ham, beef, sausage, mushroom, black olive, pineapple, green pepper, tomato, bacon. Uh, the, the thickest, biggest, richest piece of uh, pizza you could, you could make. And during the pandemic with sales up 30%, Pizza Gallery has sold anywhere between 50 to 100 masterpieces a day. It's our most popular pizza. This, by the way, is what it looks like on a Wednesday afternoon when business is slow. Uh, on a Friday night, we might deliver to 200 households, uh, probably sell 400 pies, probably have 15 to 20 kids working in this little area. Holden, what's your favorite? Um, pepperoni. He loves the pepperoni pizza, the basic pepperoni pizza. From the basic pep to the masterpiece, okay. Pizza Gallery is providing an artistic touch to the ultimate comfort food. Thank you very much. That pizza looks awesome. Saint ordered a masterpiece and he could only get through two slices. He said it's that big. Well, who would have ever guessed that 2020 would be the year of the mask? And yet we're all wearing them now, trying to be responsible. I think your mask says a lot about what kind of person you are. For instance, I need to talk for a living sometimes so I like this mask because it doesn't push against my lips. Some other mask would make you sound like this. This one, it doesn't. You can, you can actually talk just fine. Well, we asked you to nominate some of your favorite local mask makers. And one of your choices is a West Seattle home-based business with a funny name that makes great masks. Ugly Yellow House is a funny name for a business until you see their headquarters. <laughs> and we make everything out of our ugly yellow house, um, which we love. Tom and Amber Meyer made bow ties for pets and people out of their West Seattle home until the pandemic began. Once COVID hit and everything was being locked down, we kind of realized nobody needed a bow tie. But there was something else that everyone did need. You know, we spent a couple days not really knowing what to do, and then, you know, we realized we had a whole lot of fabric and a whole lot of free time, and people could not get masks at the time. The Myers got to work making and giving away masks to anyone who needed them. We gave away probably until almost May. All we did was donate. And then as we started to see that everyone was making them and that our essential workers were taken care of, we thought, okay, you know, maybe this is something we can do business-wise. And here we are. <laughs> Ugly yellow house masks cost $18 and come in different sizes and patterns, including lace, fringe, and this bestseller. We are in Seattle. People really do like the buffalo plaid. Yep. They're lined with unbleached cotton and attached behind the head instead of behind the ears. That was just the biggest thing for us is, is people need to wear them. You know, they need to be comfortable. They need to be safe. And we actually need them on people's faces. These masks add a bit of whimsy to a serious topic. And even though business is booming for Ugly Yellow House, what these two really want is to get out of the mask making business. I would love to go back to making bow ties. You know, like, <laughs> this is the thing that I'm truly passionate about doing, but I yeah. mean, this is where we need to be. There's no leeway for this. There's no like, I'm sort of into it. Like, wear a mask, no question. 
wear a mask. If you can't afford one, we'll give you one. If you can't find one, we'll make you one. I don't care how you get one, just get one. Okay, Ugly Yellow House just started their new line of holiday masks. You can find a link to that on our website, king5evening.com. Your pick for best new hobby is the perfect pandemic pastime. It gets you outside and growing food that you might not be able to find in your grocery store. Here's Angela. You know, we asked you to nominate your best new hobby of 2020. A lot of you picked gardening, and Marsha Bruno, the owner of West Seattle Nursery, agrees. Uh, we made everybody slow down, and we did appointments only. Because of that, we were only letting like six people in at a time, and because our customers really just wanted to be safe, and, and my employees really wanted to be safe, but they would buy a lot when they were in here. Yeah, this nursery even started a blog called Gardening in the Age of Coronavirus that showed off customer projects ranging from green roofs to a hydrangea walk to a mini cornfield. Marsha, who's owned this nursery for a year, says at the beginning of the pandemic, there were a couple of nursery items that gardeners were hoarding. People were buying ridiculous amounts of soil, bags and bags of soil. We were running out way faster than we normally do, and it was our version of the toilet paper. But also with seeds, we were, people were buying just packs and packs and packs. You all had a lot of suggestions for best local hero when we asked. A lot of you said teachers. Good choice. One woman nominated her mom. There are a lot of heroes all around us these days, but the one that caught our eye is a nurse in public health, and it's because of what she does in her time off. Here's Kim. Public health nurse Michaela Banks marched with Black Lives Matter in Seattle, but she wanted to do more to support communities of color. Toni Morrison has this great sentiment where she talked about during the civil rights movement, she said, there are people on the streets and in the trenches and that's so important, but I'm not there. And so where am I and what can I do there? So she turned her love of making cakes toward that cause, launching Sweet Sweet Justice on Instagram. It's a weekly cake auction for different racial justice organizations. Based on Instagram, every week I announce a different organization, either locally or nationally. We learn about uh, the need and the work that's being done. And then there's a 24 hour auction, uh, highest bidder wins the cake and all the proceeds go to that organization. This salted caramel beauty raised $210 for the Black Mamas Matter Alliance. This Vietnamese iced coffee cake raised $165 for Creative Justice Northwest. And this Halloween-themed cake with marshmallow spider webs was her most successful auction yet. A couple of weeks ago, we had $410 to the NAACP. A sweet way to unwind from her job on the front lines of the pandemic. To me, baking is very therapeutic. And promote racial justice at the same time. People are interested, and this is a little corner of the world that I can use to do some good. Michaela is not a pro, but she does work with one essential ingredient. It is made with so much love and so little perfection. It always tastes good, and it sometimes looks good. It's a small thing, this home baker using the tools she has to support the work of racial equity. I think it starts with humility and listening. Well, what privileges do I have? What power do I have? And then how can I use that to uplift and empower and protect and honor? Sweet Sweet Justice has raised more than $2,000 since August, and Michaela plans to keep using batter and buttercream to make the world better, one cake at a time. That's the hope. Justice is sweet and kindness is sweet and cake is sweet. <laughs> Wow, that is really cool. Sweet Sweet Justice cake auctions happen every weekend. We have a link so you can go on over there, bid on a cake, and do some good. Up next, the best socially distant getaway. Going from Tacoma to the SeaTac Airport was 45 minutes, and now my commute is three minutes and 15 seconds. And your pick for best nonprofit. Best of the Best is sponsored by Premier Blue Cross. Murals like this one are what you picked for best pandemic inspired art. This mural is by Stevie Shao, a Chinese American illustrator and artist born and raised in Seattle, who's passionate about local causes, public art and social justice. 
She blends the graphic nature of tattoo imagery and folk art and has done nine murals in 2020. Our thanks to her and all the other artists who are helping keep our city beautiful during this tough time. Welcome back to evening's best of the best. We asked you for your choice of best socially distanced getaway and a lot of you said your backyard. That's why I'm right here in mine. I'm really glad I have it. It's come in handy over the last few months. Well, right now, Angela heads down to the coast to another great getaway. It's the kind of place most of us just see in pictures. A place where you can slow it down and play, whether it's in the water, on land, or in the sky, and where nights can end like this. Seabrook is a beach town on Washington's coast where roughly 120 people live full time. But since COVID-19, more people are coming here and staying put. My husband uh, said he didn't have to go back to work until March and we said, why not stay out at the beach? Yes. <laughs> Pamela Sue Jones and her husband sold their home in Sammamish and plan to worry about living closer to work when the time comes. <laughs> We get to enjoy the beach, and my husband on breaks gets to go walk down to the beach and, and enjoy himself, and it's really stress-free. Rhonda Salveson made a similar housing pivot after being laid off from her job at Hawaiian Airlines. Our final flight out was March 26th. She and her family have long kept a small vacation home here, but now they are putting down roots. We went and bought a bigger home because we know this is where we're gonna be and who knows how long COVID's gonna be around. So we're gonna, just gonna stay here. And as fate would have it, Rhonda even found a job within walking distance of her home in Seabrook's sales office. Going from Tacoma to the SeaTac airport was 45 minutes, you know, with traffic. And now my commute is three minutes and 15 seconds. Yes, if my husband's walking with me, it's three minutes and 30 seconds because he meanders. <laughs> that's our, you know, that's our community building. The town's co-founder, Casey Roloff, says sales at Seabrook are up between 30 and 40%. I would say the primary buyer is buying for a second home, but a second home now means something completely different than it did before because we have so much more time on our hands and our, we have so much more flexibility with, again, telecommuting, you know, online school, telemedicine. I just think this shift is gonna be long lasting. He says it's a throwback to the towns 100 years ago before we started planning housing around our cars, a place where you can walk, bike, or skateboard anywhere you need to go. And that seems like this almost dreamland to a lot of people, but that used to be the norm. And we're just bringing that back. You know, people come out for the ocean, they're always drawn to the ocean but it's the town of Seabrook that brings people back. Urban living, a stone's throw from nature, a place where working from home never looked so good. Thank you, Angela. Some great hiking and mountain biking around Seabrook too. You know, the pandemic's been really tough on nonprofits, which makes this next best category all the more impressive. This is a nonprofit organization that has delivered more than a million meals during the pandemic. Laura McConnelly's life was transformed when she attended culinary classes at Seattle nonprofit Fair Start. I got myself into some trouble and had to restart my life and figure out what it was I wanted to do. Um, Fair Start gave me a chance. After working at a well-known Seattle fine dining restaurant, She's back at Fair Start making meals for those who desperately need them right now. Laura returned a few years ago, but recently Fair Start has hired over a dozen program graduates who lost their restaurant jobs because of the pandemic. Executive chef Wayne Johnson says it's always emotional when a grad returns to the place that launched them. And the feeling, oh, the feeling, when they walk back into this kitchen and it was like full circle for them. Like, now I'm feeding and I'm supporting people that were in my situation. And it just, it's just lifted up the whole energy in this building. That energy is much needed. 
Fair Start has turned all of its focus to feeding people in need during this pandemic. So far, they've delivered 1.5 million meals since March. Their restaurants, Guest Chef Night, and their catering services are temporarily suspended because of COVID, but raw ingredients keep coming in. I think they said we were getting 500 pounds of squash yesterday. And the cooks in these kitchens are working harder than ever, turning food into delicious fare for people in need. I also wanted to do for somebody else what was done for me. As the pandemic continues to impact lives, Fair Start's 1.5 million count will continue to grow as they continue to nourish this community one meal at a time. What we do here is transform lives, disrupt poverty, and nourish our communities. That's the mission. Nothing's changed with that. <laughs> it's just gotten really big. When it does come back, Fair Start's Guest Chef Night is one of the best dinner deals in Seattle. It's a fixed price gourmet meal served up by a celebrity chef with some assistance from culinary students. Put it on your post-pandemic to-do list. We'll be right back. Up next, your pick for best at-home arts experience and how they're making beautiful music together safely. Best Business Innovation goes to Canlis in Seattle. From a crab shack in their parking lot during the summer to Canlis University, the nearly 70-year-old Seattle restaurant continues to surprise us all. Welcome back to our Best of the Best special. You know, one of the worst things about the pandemic is that we can't get together to enjoy live music out in public. But the Seattle Symphony is back on stage again with masks and social distancing, and they are our choice for the best at-home local arts experience. The Seattle Symphony is making beautiful music together again. It was beautiful. It was like, wow, like we're doing like, this is what we live for, you know? That, that was the, the feeling that I had. And it was very exciting, I remember, and very joyful. Concert master Noah Geller is among the musicians who've been gathering on stage at Benaroya Hall for live streaming performances since September 19th. There may not be an in-person audience, but there's something special about these shows. Our concerts right now, it feels like we're playing for our lives, you know? Seattle Symphony's president and CEO, Krishna Tiagarajan, remembers the exact date when the music stopped. March 11th, we had to shut down and just stop all performances. And it, that was just surreal. Uh, musicians sitting at home, not connecting with audiences, that's not what we were meant to do. Online fundraisers, recordings of pre-pandemic shows, brought in some money for the nonprofit. But the thing the musicians missed most playing music together. We were determined to find ways to get through this and to come up with you know, unusual solutions to a certainly very unusual problem. The Seattle Symphony consulted with experts from hospitals, the UW, and Harvard Medical School about how to make music without making each other sick. Today, no one gets on stage or backstage without a weekly COVID test. Musicians wear masks, the orchestra is smaller, and concerts are shorter, all to limit exposure. And the Seattle Symphony is performing live shows again and streaming them at seattlesymphonylive.org. I do think that, yeah, the quality is great, and if you've got a good set of speakers, I think if you crank it, you'll really enjoy it. After all, music is essential. Music is part of mental health. Music is part of the, the process of inspiration especially to the artists who make it. And to make music and connect with your fellow musicians and to connect with your audiences, I think it's everything. It's, it's what we live for, it's what we do. I just wanna say how absolutely proud I am uh, of our organization right now and how happy I am to be able to bring some form of music to, uh, to our audiences and that I just can't wait to see everyone when this is all over. All right, there's a link to the Seattle Symphony's upcoming concerts on our website, king5evening.com. Up next, it gives a whole new meaning to Cubicle, the best new way to get together. 
Welcome back to our Best of the Best show. Now our final category, Best New Way to Get Together. I bet you can guess what this one is. Yep, Zoom. It's been a lifesaver. In fact, Team Evening got together over Zoom just last week for a virtual happy hour. We haven't all been in the office together since mid-March. This show is literally homemade. Thanks for joining us for Best of the Best. We're gonna leave you now with Seattle Symphony's rehearsal of Beethoven's Symphony Number no. Eight. Have a great night.